Hey everyone, today we are learning chapter number 4, Growth of a Plant, Germination, Reproduction in a Plant. In this chapter, we will be discussing growth of a plant, seed to plant, pollination and fertilization. Before getting into the chapter, let's have a quick warm up. Tia loves eating fruit, especially mangoes. One day, after having a mango, she threw the seed on the ground. After a few months, she saw that there is a plant growing there. Her father tells that there is a mango plant growing in that place. Do you know why there is a plant in the place where Tia threw seed? All living things are born. They grow and they die. So to sustain life, all living things reproduce so that the new beings will be there to take their place after they die. This is called life cycle of a living thing. In the previous years, we have learned the life cycle of animals. But have you wondered what the life cycle of plant is? In this chapter, we will discuss how plant grows. The life cycle of a plant. Plant grows out of seeds. The seeds, when planted into the soil, makes new plants. Fully grown plants have flowers. The flowers on fertilization produces fruit and seeds. So the new plant comes from seeds. But where do seeds come from? If you look at the animals around you, there are both male and female members in each animal group. But in plant, the flower is a reproductive part. Both male and female parts are there in the same flower but placed separately. The stamen, which is male part, has pollen grains and pistil, which is female part, has ovules. Now let us discuss what the pollination is. For a seed to form, the ovary should receive the pollen. The process by which the pollen falls into the ovary is called pollination. Insects, birds and wind play a role in pollination. For example, when a honeybee tries to eat nectar from the flowers, the pollen sticks to its body. As the bee moves from flower to flower, it takes the pollen from one plant to another. The process in which the pollen grains and ovary join to become seed is called fertilization. Most plants reproduce through seeds. The development of a plant from seed is called germination. To understand how a plant grows out of a seed, we should learn parts of a seed. The parts of seed. All seeds have an outer cover called seed coat. The seed coat protects the parts inside the seed. The seed coat is the part we see and hold in our hands. Some seed coats are hard and some seeds have soft seed coats. The seeds of corn, beans, peas, okra, etc. have hard seed coats. Those of marigolds, tomatoes, zinnias, peppers, cucumbers have soft seed coats. The inside of seeds contains four parts. Epicotyl. Epicotyl are the parts of the seed that grow into the first leaves of the plant. Hypocotyl. Hypocotyl grows to become the stem of a plant. Radical. Radical is the first fruit of the plant. Cotyledon. Cotyledon is the food store of the seed. On germination, epicotyl, hypocotyl and radical will become the new baby plant. Cotyledon will provide the food and energy the baby plant needs for some days. The process of germination. Germination starts when we sow the seed in the soil and water it. We should take care that we do not put too much water. As the seed absorbs water, minerals and oxygen from the soil, it swells and pops open. Here is a tidbit of this chapter. Coco de Mer or double coconut is a rare palm tree that is found in Seychelles. It weighs up to 30 kgs. Did you know that seeds can be dormant for years? The oldest seed was found that could still germinate was nearly 1000 years old. First the cotyledons and radical come out. The radical grows to become roots and takes hold of soil. It will start taking nutrients and water from the soil. As the root grows, the roots will firmly hold the soil so the plant can come up above the ground. Next, hypocotyl comes out of the seed. 
the hypocotyl continues to grow upwards. Along with hypocotyl, epicotyl also grows upwards. The hypocotyl and epicotyl start growing and appearing on the ground or soil and slowly start growing as stems and leaves of a plant. They start doing photosynthesis and not rely on cotyledon for food. Then cotyledons become brown and fall on the ground. The process of starting of a seed to a new plant is called germination. Seeds with softer seed coats germinate faster than seeds with harder seed coats. Seeds with hard seed coats need more time to absorb enough water to soften the seed coat and that the inside parts of the seed can break through. Seeds only germinate when the conditions are suitable. Otherwise, the seeds lay dormant. Dormant seeds are inactive and no changes will occur till we provide suitable conditions. What affects germination? Sunshine. Seeds may not need sunshine but they must be warm to germinate. Sun heats up the soil and this warm soil helps the seeds to germinate. Water. The amount of water in the ground also affects germination. Seeds need water to germinate. If the soil is too dry, the seed will not get enough water. If the soil is too wet, the soil will not have enough oxygen in it to give it to the seed. How deep we sow the seeds? If we sow a seed too deep, the seeds have more distance to cover when they try to come out of the ground. The food stored in the seed will be over before they reach the ground. Hence, we should sow the seeds near the top of the soil. Season Seeds need warmth. So, in winter, the seeds cannot germinate as it is cold and sunlight is also less. Seeds wait till spring when it becomes warm again to germinate. Let's explore. Find out which plants grow new plants without seeds. Discuss it in your class. Let us think. We have learned how we plant the seeds and how they germinate. But how do seeds germinate in nature? Everything in nature has a purpose. Beautifully colored flowers attract the birds and insects and in this way the animals help in pollination. In the same way colorful fruits attract some animals. When birds and animals eat fruit, they consume the fruit leaving the seeds on the ground. Sometimes the fruit is not eaten in the same place but taken elsewhere. In this way, the seeds spread far and wide. When animals walk onto the seeds, they push the seeds into the ground. And in suitable conditions like season, water and sunshine, these seeds germinate into new plants. Other ways to grow new plants. Not all plants have seeds. So how do new plants grow in these plants? Grafting. Planting the cutting of stems in the ground is called grafting. Strawberries, money plants, etc. grow from stem cuttings. Plant modifications. When we plant a carrot or potato in the soil, they grow into new plants. They also produce more potatoes and carrots. Spore. Some plants produce spores which can grow into new plants. Mushrooms, ferns, etc. grow new plants through their spores. Here is a science top off of this chapter. Sprouts are germinating seeds. Chickpeas, green gram, etc. are dormant seeds. When we soak them in water and keep them warm, they start to germinate. The white structure coming out of these sprouts are radical of the seed. If we plant these into the soil, they start making a new plant. Here is the glossary of this chapter. Inactive. Not having any physical activity. Idle. So, plant seed scattering it on or in the soil. Four. A tiny or minute reproductive unit capable of growing individual plants without fertilization. Here is the mind map of this chapter. For a seed to form, the ovary should receive the pollen. The process by which the pollen falls into the ovary is called pollination.
The process in which the pollen grains and ovary join to become seeds is called fertilization. Seed. The different parts of seeds are seed coat. It is the outermost layer of the seed. Cotyledon. Cotyledon is the food store of the seed. Radical. Radical is the first root of the plant. Hypocotyl. Hypocotyl grows to become the stem of the plant. Epicotyl. Epicotyl are the parts of the seed that grow into the first leaves of the plant.